Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to get into a little ball talk. Today we're going to talk about how Mike McDonald pressures work and how they affect the offensive line. So let's get started. Let's dive right into it. But before we do it, make sure you like the video. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And also make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos come out. Now, this is one of those videos that maybe not relevant now, but it's one of the videos that can sit on the channel and can just stand the test of time. It's good ball talk that can be relevant now. It can be relevant to the Seattle Seahawks fans from down the line. It can be relevant to the Dolphins fans that, you know, if Weaver decides to run some of Mike McDonald's schemes, to the Tennessee Titans fans, if they decide to run some of Mike McDonald's schemes, it'll just be relevant to people that evolve off of Mike McDonald's tree. But we'll show a few plays on the board, not real clips, of how Mike McDonald's schemes affect or affect, whichever is the proper term to use it, the offensive line. So let's get started. We go uh, center, guard, tackle, center, guard, tackle. We have the back. And let's just say we normally use this even front with a tackle and a three, but two backers for the most part. Because you know, for the most part, we stayed in some kind of nickel front. So normal blocking, you got to account for. So let's just say we do a, say the O-line does a half slide, half man. So let's say they, they slide in this way, protecting those gaps. He got C gap, he got B gap, he got A gap. Man to man, man to man, and he's scanning A to C. So I mean, he's got this backer wherever he comes from. So what Mike loves to do is, he'll walk guys up. And so he walked these guys up, so he walks a guy there and a guy there. The O-line now has to account for him. So when they go account for him, they may change protection to whatever. They may do a full slide left. So let's say do a full slide left. So A, I'm sorry, C, B, A. He has A now, he has B. Then the back will pick up the end. And so when, when that happens, then we start to drop guys out. So if they, if they do this and we drop, say, maybe we drop Queen out and drop this tackle out. So these guys have accounted for that. But I forgot to mention, that's when you have Kyle come off his edge over here. So now these guys have accounted for these guys. They drop out. They, they really don't know who to block now because they've accounted for those two guys. Then you bring Kyle out the edge with that because they got to account for that. He got to account for that. You got Kyle coming off the edge. So that's something simple because now these guys, when you see it, if you ever saw any of the blitzes where Kyle Hamilton or Arthur Mollett come and get sacks, when these guys drop out, whether it be Brandon Stevens or Queen, or even we've dropped um, Michael Pierce and, and Travis Jones out, the, the offensive linemen, they'll kick back and they're looking from side to side trying to see who it is to block because they don't know. And you get your edge guys with a clean run through. And that's kind of how they confuse the offensive line. Let's give you another example. Another example where we come from distance. And what we're doing is as Queen will come late, and I know Queen may or probably won't be there next year, but just giving you examples of what we ran while he was here. He'll come late. So let's just say the responsibilities are C gap, that A gap, this A gap, and the B gap. That's just your, your, your run fit, so to speak. And obviously his will be that one. But he'll wait to the last minute, right when the cadence starts, and he'll just haul butt into this gap right here. He'll haul butt there and take that guy on. And just take him on. And in the process of him trying to do that, this guy, he'll, he'll take a couple steps there and then loop around. So keep in mind, that got three guys over here, so he got to count for that, he got to count for that, and he got to count for that. They're not even looking on what's going on over here. And so when that, when that happens, he obviously taking that. And so now you got a two man. These two guys versus these two guys. And if any one of them get free, it's a mismatch. It's a mismatch on the back. I mean, erase that and make it a little clearer. So you got your tackle, got your back, got your defensive tackle, 
and you got your linebacker. Now he's coming. If he take that on and if he get that clean and he gets a clean loop, that's a nose tackle on a running back. Who wouldn't want that any day of the week? Any day of the week. Now what Queen has gotten so good at doing is he'll take this on and bounce off of it. That guy will come free and he'll come free too. So now you got the nose tackle free. Queen has bounced off of the, the guard because he's so athletic. So now you got two guys free coming at the quarterback. And if it's nothing hot, if it's nothing real quick, the quarterback has nowhere to go with it. And then don't let him be one of those stationary quarterbacks like Stafford, like um, Kirk Cousins, one of those guys that can't move. He has nowhere to go. He has nowhere to go. Now a uh, Joe Burrow or, or Pat Mahomes or Kyler Murray, some of those guys can kind of you know, get out of there and do their thing. But those stationary guys, you can almost write that down as a sack. Let's give you one more way. That might kind of, you know, and he got a bunch of different ways to do it. These are kind of some of the ways that just kind of stick out off the top of my head. He'll take, this is another one I like. He'll take Matt BK and put him out here. He'll take like oh well something and stick him in there. And so now, and then and what, what a lot of teams like to do, they'll motion a guy in like a tight end and try to put the tight end right there. And now all we do is just motion a guy in right there with him. And so that means, might be like Kyle Hamilton or something like that. But now you're looking at your nickel, which is Kyle, and the same box, same type box stuff. And so now you got all these guys in here. So you got what, one, two, you got seven guys versus their one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And eight if you count the quarterback. So now you, your, your, your games are limitless. I mean, you, you got all kinds of things you can do. So you got gap responsibility versus the run. Got all, all the gap responsibility versus run. Now in pass protection, but not pass protection, your, your blitz, blitz um, options are, are limitless. And what I love when he do is walk these guys up in here. So now you got what we call a show. We call a show. Now, show don't necessarily mean you're going. That just means walk up in the line. And so now these guys got to account for them. They have to account for them because they can't walk up in the line and you'll see linemen. They start pointing and talking and doing all that because they got to account for them. So now what I like what, what Mike would do is he'll drop out the big boys. He'll drop out the big boys. And all they doing is they really don't have a lot of past responsibility. They're there to take away and scare the high routes. So if you got a little fast, quick receiver, and he running a real shallow quick, he gonna think twice when Michael Pierce coming through there. Or you drop it right there, and it's, that's Brandon Stevens. They gonna think twice coming through there. They gonna stutter their feet and be like, oh, they gonna get alligator arms. They ain't there to really defend the pass. They there to scare the shit out of somebody. That's what they there for. And now you got quicker guys, Pat Queen, Roquan, versus guards. And they can do whoop the whoop, do whatever, and get inside. Now, if these guards get their hands on them, Probably gonna win. Probably gonna win. But you got guys that can be more athletic and get inside. And before the season started, if you remember, I told you, I thought Kyle Hamilton and Pat Queen were our best blisters. Not knowing what we was gonna get from um, Clowney and Vanoa. But end up Clowney and Vanoa end up being pretty darn good. But preseason, I thought Vanoa, not, not Vanoa, I thought Queen and Hamilton would be our best blisters. But again, there's just different ways that Mike will present pressure issues. And I know Orr can do this. And Orr probably sitting in the back of me and be like, okay, if we do that, and I put this guy here, we might can do this while dropping that guy there. So he probably wrote that down in his notebook. So that's ways that he can build on what Mike did. And these are three simple things that I just thought of sitting at my desk. I'm sure they got a whole notebook of different blitz pressures and pressure packages that all they got to do is just as long as the, the coverages match the, the blitzes, they can do. And it's all about communication. As long as they communicate who's going where and whatnot, all these jobs can be traded out. They can be traded out pre-snap. Because at any point, one of these linebackers can walk up here and say, hey, you drop out, I'm going to go. Or, hey, you go, I'm going to drop out. At any point. It's just got to be communicated. Communication is the key on defense. Whether it's up here 
or on the back end. They got to communicate. And the fact that Mike talk everybody, everybody else's job, that's the key. And I hope all will continue to do the same thing. So, you know, we were probably going to do the same thing in Miami. Uh, Milton's probably going to do the same thing in Tennessee. I know Mike's going to do it in Seattle. And all should probably continue to do the same thing here in Baltimore. And so that's all I got for you today. Something real quick, something real simple. Something I was, doing, I was thinking about while I was sitting at my desk earlier. I hope you like it. If you do like it, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button also. And again, hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. This is Coach Evans with another lunch break. I was about to steal their stuff. <laughs> with another lunchtime video. So I'll see y'all soon. Don't forget the round table tonight at 9 where we'll discuss a number of topics. See y'all soon. Peace.